So let's start off with the existing backyard. It's seven and a half meters deep, 15 meters wide. There's a bit of an incline from front to back. There's an existing link block retaining wall at the back and a pretty dodgy side fence. But uh, yeah, this is what we're starting with. Okay, so here's the plan. It's a 3.4 by 6.2 meter pool. Uh, we've got it on the northern side of the, uh, the backyard, which is uh, this rectangle here. So we get a good east to west aspect. We've gone for 800 of tile on the, uh, the front and side, 1200 on the other side, and then just a single row at the back there. Uh, the pool fencing runs from front to back, all the way to the back fence, up the retaining wall, which is a bit difficult and then it just runs off to the side boundary as well. So access to the pool is from the existing alfresco and uh, all of the site access has to be down the, uh, down the side yard. Let's get stuck in. First thing that happens is uh, the pool shell arrives on the back of a truck, which then gets um, lifted onto either your front yard or your neighbor's front yard. So it's uh, always good to be good friends with your neighbors because this will be, need to be here for a few days. Just while they, uh, while they dig the hole and get everything ready for it. Next up, they've got to make some space for the, uh, the digging equipment to get down the side of the house. So they take apart gates and fences and uh, they rip up all of that, uh, the weed mat down the side there so that it doesn't get torn up too bad. Now they start scraping the earth away, just uh, just down below the, uh, below the grass, like maybe 50 mil off the top, measuring out the uh, the total the total area, so including the the pool yard. That little PVC pipe with the uh, with the blue gauge on the side is what they actually use to determine the levels, and uh, they use that and you reference that a lot throughout the construction. So it's very very important that they. Um, yeah, they get the levels absolutely spot on, especially in the, the early stage here. So it's early on when they're establishing the, like the finished floor level of the pool, so how high it's going to sit above, uh, above kind of natural ground. So you want it to be a little bit out of the ground so that the, uh, the rain doesn't flood into it whenever it rains a ton. So we went for about 120 mil above the finished floor level of the alfresco, which put it about level with natural ground at the, at the back of the yard, at the retaining wall there. But there's a lot of, a lot of work in um, making sure that these levels are adhered to. So as the digger digs, the bobcat takes all of that earth out to the front and puts it in the tipper, which he then goes and, uh, goes and dumps. The kind of clay in the backyard here too was, uh, was a bit of fun to work with because as they dug it out of the ground, it expanded quite a lot. So I think they pulled out geometrically about 30 cube of, uh, of clay, but once it had been um, dug out, it ended up being something like 80. So it was... Uh, it was a lot. Once it once it decompresses and uh, touches the air, it just expands. So yeah, they, they dug out tons, even though it's not that big of a pool.
these guys did a really 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 good job of not ruining too much of the grass you can see there's a, that pretty neat line down the side which they they didn't ever really go over um, which is <laughs> very much appreciated because grass takes a while to heal It was like a 45 minute round trip for the uh, for the tipper to dump the, dump the earth as well, which is why there's some, um, some lapses where the pile builds up but the bobcat doesn't do anything. So they had to make a, a heap of trips to get this all done. So here's the tracks to the, the front yard, which they, uh, they, they ran through. Uh, not too much damage, luckily. And that's the end of day one. Alrighty, so here we are at the start of day two. Um, the pool shell is sitting in my next door neighbor's front yard and they were lovely enough to let us uh, sit it here for a few days. Hopefully it isn't there over the weekend, but you know, it's a construction site, so things happen. Um, they parked the parked the truck out the front here and were taking the bobcat around through the front yard, which is uh, pretty chewed up, and um, down the side of the house to the, uh, to the backyard there. They've put up some temporary fencing for overnight just so that, you know, no one can walk straight into, um, straight into the backyard. But yeah, the grass is pretty, pretty torn up but it's just one of those things hey um, they'll you know they'll do their best to kind of repair it before they go but it's gonna it's gonna need to regrow uh, it'll take a few months but it'll go back to normal it's all good all right so in the backyard now um, they left a bunch of temporary fencing here because uh, that's what they're gonna need to put around the pool before the actual pool fencing goes on so no one falls in and drowns um, they leave the machines here overnight uh, because they take the keys with them and good luck moving those things without the keys. It's a pretty, I don't think the video does it justice, but it's a very, very deep hole. It, um, it feels, when you stand next to it, you feel like there's a fair drop down there. But um, yeah, so they've, they've scraped back the land. It's all kind of level. They're digging the hole now. They've got to continue digging the hole. Then they've got to lay all the provisions for the pipes and things. So um, skimmer box, overflow, electrical. Um, I think the pool pump is going to go on the wall just there. Pretty excited to see how today goes. Should be good. Yeah, so here we are at the start of day two. Um, it was awesome watching Jamie do his thing with the digger. Hey, he was just so meticulous with uh, with how he worked. As you can see, it's just millimeter accuracy. So the goal today was to get the hole fully dug and if that was going to happen they were going to be able to put the pool in on Friday which would have been awesome. But as mentioned earlier the clay was uh, was a bit of a pain to work with so it would have, uh, would have been a big old effort to get it done. They've, uh, they've pre-dug the hole for the skimmer box on the, the, the backyard fence 
side of the hole there as well. So this is where the certifier came for a, uh, a preliminary preliminary check and I just I ran all of my ideas past her about what I had in mind for getting the, all the fences ready for, for certification and um, yeah she was awesome she answered all my questions made some suggestions and um, yeah I felt pretty good moving forward with uh, with getting getting it all approved because that side fence was a bit dilapidated it was close to falling over so I um, had to put a bit of work into that and uh, to get that fence replaced would have been thirteen thousand dollars. So, yeah, really had to uh, had, had to make it work. It was amazing that Jamie was able to operate that machine in such a such a tight spot. Hey, like he was very carefully digging. Digging, uh, digging earth out and then like moving it over the fence and over the plants and managed to not hit anything the whole time. It was just unreal, he's so good. So they're using that pipe once again to, to check all the depths and levels so it's ready for, the, uh, ready for the pool shell to be lifted in tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, they managed to get there. So uh, luckily, we got the uh, got the pool shell in before the weekend. Here's me and the little gremlin in the massive hole in our backyard. The hole looked much, much bigger than the completed pool does. There was just something about it, just very impressive. So before the pool shell gets actually put in the hole, they uh, they get a, a ton of crusher dust in, and then they form like a base for the pool to um, for the pool shell to sit on, and it's, so that's how they get it like millimeter level um, because it's it's stuff that's easy to work with and forms a forms a really good base. So they dig the hole, you know, 200 mil whatever, too deep, and then they fill up that with crusher dust and then form a, a like a perfectly flat base for the pool shell to to sit in. It's also on this morning that they will drill all of the holes for the light and the, um, the jets into the side of the fiberglass pool shell. So this is the crane, the big boy huge thing that uh, all the neighbors came out to have a look at as well. So it's rated to lift, uh, I think like 800 kilos, and the boom was like five times the, the height of the house. It's unreal. see Jamie with the stick here he's checking the level of all of the corners um, because what they're gonna do next is they're gonna lift the shell out again and he's uh, he's taking some notes about where to like add or take away from the base to make it spot-on level so they check the vertical dimensions now they're checking the horizontal dimensions making sure that it's it's perfectly you know, parallel with everything so we aligned it with the alfresco the fence is not uh, parallel with anything because it's barely standing up at the moment so yeah as long as it's in line with the alfresco and the, the back boundary we're pretty happy
So it's in the hole now, but the hole is not perfect, right? Because it's dug with a big piece of machinery. So the next step is to put uh, crusher dust down the side to, to really like fill out that space. So you can't do all of it at once. So they're gonna go up to a certain level and then they put some temporary struts in the pool and then they start to fill the pool up. So the water, like the outward pressure of the water will set it against the, um, set it against the crusher dust and then they'll do that over like two stages. So they fill it up halfway or just under halfway and then they'll come back and fill it like do the rest of the next day. So now there's a pool in the ground and there's some water in it, that means it's time for some temporary fencing to go up overnight. So it's really starting to come together now, this is the end of day three. Over the weekend I got my brother-in-law around and we put in two new hardwood posts to, uh, to support the fence. Um, rather than replace the fence or replace the existing posts, we just put two new ones in and uh, a ton of concrete for the footings. So that fence is now solid as, it's not going anywhere. So all that's left to do now really is to um, yeah, fill up the sides with some more crusher dust and then uh, build the base for the concreter to, to come in and do his thing with, with the same crusher dust. So it's essentially forming a, forming a surface for the concrete to sit on. So what they're also doing here is they're building up a base for the concrete using the crusher dust so that there's a nice flat you know, level surface for them to put the concrete over. Then they go through and compact it all down when, um, when the extents of the, the pool yard are done. Digging the uh, digging the trenches for the um, the plumbing of the pool, so like the skimmer box and the jets and the uh, the electrical cable for the light to then go back to the the pump and the filter and um, you know like a power point for the light and everything. So that's just around the side of the house and you can't see any of that. But
so here we are at handover day. Um, everything's done tool-wise. Um, they just had to finish installing the, the filter and do like a, a like a run over with um, with me about how to operate everything really. So here we are on concrete day. Um, first thing they're going to do is set up the Rio, so all of the steel reinforcement and all of the mesh that you use, uh, it essentially helps the concrete stay together. It's really, really, really tough concrete how they um, how they build it. So yeah, they did, they did a really good job. They're all tying the wire to the pool there. Yeah, the timber that you can see they're setting up it's called formwork so that's what they use to essentially form the edge of the slab and then they uh, then they knock the knock the timber away when it's when it's done These guys put in a massive effort, hey, they were they were here until the sun was gone, trying to get everything done in one day. See on the right hand side there there's a bit of formwork which they haven't put in so there was a real chance that I was gonna have to pay for a concrete pump if um, because the, the slab was getting put in so close to the side boundary and that would have cost me $800 which you know I was willing to pay but luckily these guys worked out um, well, they were happy to, to leave off the, the formwork on that little corner there so that they can run the um, run the concrete in and then they'd form that last corner up as they go so yeah they put all the saddles under the Rio which are those little um, little black things are a little bit hard to see now they've uh, now the concrete trucks arrived so they're um, quickly going around and um, pouring it all in they may they make it look really easy but this is a, a meticulous art so now they put that final piece of uh, final piece of formwork in so yeah that saved me eight hundred dollars which I was very thankful for So I was pretty surprised when they started uh, started bringing bringing the tiles or the, the pavers out because I thought they were going to get into that the next day, but um, now they just got straight into it. Hey, as soon as the concrete had set enough, you can see they've set up their string lines so that um, everything's perfectly level and accurate. Also notice too that these um, these pavers they will overhang the lip of the pool or the edge of the pool just a little bit and then they put silicon underneath that so that uh, so that's waterproof.
so they're starting to really lose the sun here which is why you're starting to see more of kitchen and less of less of pool but they um yeah they put in a huge shift and, and got all the papers down so all that's left for them to do tomorrow is to grout all of the papers and then they're uh, they're done so it should just be a few hours in the morning but it's already looking great hey So you can see him getting ready to put the silicon under the uh, under the lip of the tile now to form that waterproof barrier so that none of the pool water splashes up and uh, under the tile. That's it, done. Now we've just got to, uh, got to put the fencing up and then we are home free. So we opted for glass, glass fencing which is about exactly twice as expensive as aluminium and I, I think it's just, it's just worth it. It's obviously more work in cleaning and, and looking after but it just looks so much nicer. So you can see they're core drilling the, uh, the holes for the spigots here. And we went for composite spigots rather than uh, non-composite because composite don't need to be earthed which is uh, just a pain to do. See those little orange clamp saddle looking things that they're using to, to hold the glass in place and then they can adjust them so that the glass is perfectly like level and straight as well. So it just kind of holds it in place and then they'll then once it's in the right spot they'll fix the glass to the spigots and then they can take the clamps away and it's all done. So unfortunately for these guys, when the um, when the glass was delivered, they forgot to include the hinges. So uh, the poor guy had to drive all the way back to the south side and then back again with the hinges so that they could install the gate. But uh, it's just one of those things, hey. <laughs> A lot of what they're doing off to the left hand side at the moment is getting ready for the custom aluminium uh, fencing which has to go up that retaining wall so it's a retained earth it's about at a gradient of one in two so it's really slippery to work on and they had to custom measure um, uh, a couple of fencing panels to go in that space because obviously it has to meet pool fencing requirements and uh, the alternative was to run the fencing all the way along to either of the side boundaries so I thought no it's just much easier to just go up to the back even though it's um a lot trickier for them to do and obviously more expensive for me.
today is custom aluminium fencing day so um, they installed the posts last time which you can, uh, can kind of see and now they're fixing the, uh, the fence paling to those posts and um, it, was, uh, it was not a fun task. It took them almost as long to do these two palings as it took them to do all the rest of the, uh, of the glass so yeah it's, uh, it's no joke. Very nearly done now. So the next bit for the project was something that I just did myself, which was to get the existing timber fences pool compliant. So I had to install tilt battens around all the neighbors' fences. So this is the neighbor at the back, and um, yeah, they were all really, really nice and let me let me come around and make a ton of noise and install some kind of unpleasant looking railings but it's it's a pool safety thing it's you know it's to keep their kids safe so now the certifier comes out to measure everything test everything works and check that I've done everything that I said I was going to do which uh, I did even though it took a little while but yeah she was all very happy with it so yeah luckily we um yeah, passed with flying colors and she was happy with uh, with what she saw and measured and this is it once um, once you get the certification you get the your form 15s and you, you're done you've got two years now before you need to to recertify so yeah I was really happy with um with how it all turned out really looking forward to summer and just spending <laughs> spending a few months in there now <laughs> 